You've put your heart on your sleeve on this record and you've told some things like you see it and you haven't held back and you're searching for a good time. And I put this in writing yesterday to someone in your camp. As an album, this is searching for a good time and it's searching for a party, but there are some unavoidable truths that need to be dealt with. Yes, that was such a beautiful statement that you made. Actually, Bobby, my manager, read that to me and I thought it was a great way of putting it. It says you want to have a good time, but that there's some pain that you got to get through. We're not there yet. Yeah. We're not there yet. Yeah. And you know, you're not alone here in feeling that way because... People are searching for a reason to try and find some kind of space within which they can be themselves. And yet this year has conspired in many ways across many, many different areas, pretty much every area in life, to be one of the more extreme years to my mind that I can remember. It's a very extreme year and a very high stressful time for mm. people of all ages, I mm. think, are feeling it, uh, especially with politics and with the... Uh, society, the way things have been moving, the, the, the chaos in America. This was a lot of my inspiration on the album. You know, you look fabulous right now. You know, you're absolutely, you know, you're show ready. And it's like you're clearly in, the, in that frame of mind that we've seen before in various different images and designs that come from within, but ultimately present you for an error in your life. This is Gaga. This is Joanne. This Joanne. is you now, right? Yes. But when the album, when you listen to the album, it's probably the first time for me that I've heard you without your makeup on throughout the whole record. You know, I, I think that the the sentiments and the stories in the album uh, don't have any makeup on. Mm. Uh, there's no filter. Mm. This mm. record goes right for the gut. And, uh, you know, vocally, lyrically, I am uh, trying to tap uh, into vibrations that make you feel like I'm giving you a giant hug in a way, or giving you a release, a place for you to rage or to feel healed, to yeah. close your eyes and uh, listen. That's the hard part. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you don't want to listen to a song that makes you go there, you know? But uh, that's what this record is. This record uh, makes you go there. But it's, it's also, um, I have to say, one of the most rewarding musical experiences of my life, making Joanne. Even through its toughest, even through the subject matter, which feels that at its most personal or at its most observational through things that seem very rough and raw right now on a global level as well as a personal level, it feels like it was a fun record to make. It sounds like it was a fun record to make. It was. To me. It was really fun to make. Every day was full of, uh, I would say, uh, taking that pain, turning it into strength taking that fear, turning it into joy. We became the album. Yeah, and I, yeah, it feels that way. Yeah, we became it, and we still are. I mean, I can't tell you all day long, Mark, and I back and forth on the phone, calling, texting, me, a blood pop, the, the whole gang, you know, we're, we're so kind of micro-focused, most importantly, on getting the message of the music into the world, mm. meaning to get the music to as many people as possible. There was some time in between the making of the last record, you know, of Art Pop and then Cheek to Cheek, and then you had some space. And yes, we have saw you and we know you were busy. I mean, you know, American Horror Story, amazing things, great achievements. But the music, it seemed to me, needed some space. And I wanted what music felt like to you before this album was made, before you got, you know, into a headspace where you could make it. Was music in you? Yes. Well, music's always in me, you know, every day. I, I, I hear things all the time, melodies, thoughts, uh, lyrics. After working with Tony Bennett and, uh, you know, singing classics, right, and uh, spending some time to also challenge myself to sing uh, in soprano for The Sound of Music. Yep. And uh, uh, when I uh, sang uh, Till It Happens to You, the song I wrote with Diane Warren uh, at the Oscars, you know, it was a totally different kind of thing for me. Uh, and I love that. I, I love all different kinds of music. I love uh, diving into different genres and becoming an expert. Mm. You know, uh, jazz was something I was always, already very versed in, but uh, with Tony, you know, I feel that I'm, I'm you know, becoming more and more of a, a, a an expert in jazz. Masterclass. Uh, you know, he gave me a masterclass. Exactly. I mean, that it's it's the total masterclass. Well, for him to invest in you like that too, and be able to say, look, I know who you are to your audience to a certain extent, and I know how diverse and and how much variation you can put into your work. But focus on this with me. Uh, Tony just wanted people to know that I could sing jazz. Exactly. I mean, more than if you ask him about it, he'll just say she can sing jazz. Yeah, you yeah. have no idea that girl can sing jazz. Yeah. You know, and. And then uh, learning even more how to improvise, even more how to be present 
you know, being present. The thing about jazz is mindfulness. Yeah. You got to be really mindful when you work uh, uh, with jazz music. And you should be mindful anyway, uh, period, when you're making music and when you're performing. You know, uh, every musician, uh, we're all communicating and talking. But with jazz music, because it's so off the cuff mm. and because Tony can just change it to be whatever he wants it yeah. to be yeah. whenever he decides, you know, you really got to be ready. Uh, so what I would say is that I was in a very um, uh, authentic or and a childlike place with music when I began this album. It's like I closed my eyes and thought, where was the first place I fell in love with music? Mm. And I can see myself as a little girl, uh, just four years old. I was four the first time I began to play piano. And... Uh, I would just sit there for hours and play, 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 and I would sing in my own little way. And uh, this childlike love of music, this is really uh, where I began with Joanne. It's amazing to think that you took yourself out of everything that you'd built throughout your life up to this point, which, let's be really clear here, has happened as far as the public are concerned in about eight years. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I think about it, and then you get to a point whereby, okay, tens of millions of albums hundreds of millions of singles sold, all these great things which look fantastic on Wikipedia. But to go back, to start to get this record done, you got to go back to that first memory. That's... Yeah, of course you have to erase it. you got to erase all that success in a way. It's like I always say when you start a record, you got to take all those uh, platinum albums off the walls, you know, put them in the back, make room for more. <laughs> You know, you, you can't you can't create records resting on either the laurels of your previous success or mm -hmm. caring about that. I mm -hmm. mean, at the end of the day, that's not really what I'm here for. I've always been obsessed with music and I enjoy transformation. Uh, transformation through music is one of the most beautiful gifts. You learn about yourself when you write music. You learn about uh, your family. You mm. learn about your friends. Mm. You learn about your relationship with the world. And uh, Joanne is my middle name, and it's the middle part of me. And uh, it's it's something that uh, I was able to return to because I discovered that inner child in myself again that loved music. And, you know, all the other stuff... Uh, if you boil it down, the truth is, yeah, I made all those records and it became this big thing, right? Yep, yep. Um, but all of the stuff on Wikipedia and all the charts and all the uh, accolades, this is the, this is fantastic noise. You know, when you think about the album as a, as a body of work called Joanne, already establishing it's a very personal journey for you, and now you would like to try and go through that and allow us to connect with it universally as well. But to do that, you got to go through it. Yeah, I had to go into uh, the deepest pain in my life. I had to go into the part of myself that you don't want to face. You know, the, for the past five years, it's been uh, different for me. You know, I went through a lot of pain. Uh, you uh, leave yourself behind in a way. Because the truth is that I can always bring my past with me, that little girl, mm. you know, that loves music. But I can never go back, Zane. You know, my life will never be the same what happened in the last five years and what's been the cause of that to everyone else the world is yours and yet i think people real fans probably knew deep down that there was something going on you know um letting go of who i was before and i don't mean becoming you know lady gaga and leaving that behind that's not what i mean by that what i mean is is you know my life is different now i can't walk down the street in the same way and be me uh, when I meet people, uh, they are not always interested in uh, speaking to me about real human things like we are right now. They mm. want to know about superficial things mm. or they want a photo or a selfie or a Snapchat or an Instagram or a, or an Insta Snap story, jam, <laughs> whatever it is that they want. You're going jazz you know, now. You, you meet kids that have like, you know, yeah, I did. I just went jazz. You went on jazz you, right? on me right there. <laughs> Straight improv. You know, you've got kids with like nine GoPros attached to their, you know, heads. Yeah, the and fame and monster. 50 self. Yeah, it's the fame monster in a, in a way. And uh, I had to reckon for myself that my life would never be the way that it was. Mm. And I loved being that girl that walked down the street on the Lower East Side that nobody knew. I loved being that girl that just rolled in from club to club and played my music and uh, discovered new people and had a community uh, with artists. 
I don't and have never felt a connection to Hollywood. And even though I've written about fame, and even though you see me in Hollywood, uh, my um, existence is uh, a bit, um, it's more, yeah, I guess I feel, uh, I, st I still feel very grounded in my family. I don't feel ever uh, that I want to transition into a new type of me that's going to be, you know, completely open to, you know, being someone that adores every red carpet and wants to be at all the events. And yet and you what... are on a lot of them. And, and it, you know, look, it's a ride. It's a ride. When you, when you get to album number two, when you get to Born This Way, right, you're on the ride whether you like it or not. So you may as well go for it. You know, straight to stadiums, award ceremonies, high pressure things. You know, and this, it's a blessing. It is a total blessing. It's a no, blessing. Yeah, no, no. I mean, look, I mean, I think most people who have been through that, that tumble dryer like you have will say, God, you know, why would you ever turn your nose up at it? But at the same time, you come out the other side of it, out of that narcissistic experience of just pure adrenaline. Pure adrenaline of the world adoring you. Right. Right. And then... You realize that, you know, it will never be the way it was before. Ha. Huh. Did it make you paranoid? Did you ever, did, like? Yes. Yeah. Paranoia, fear. Um, alcohol? Uh, oh, yeah. Alcohol. Drugs? Drugs. Um, uh, 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 anxiety? Anxiety, <sighs> body pain, and a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, feeling uh, unsafe in yep. my own body yep. because I leave the house and there's people touching me, grabbing me, yelling, you know, and it's uh, but particularly, you know, I've been open about this before, um, you know, the assault that I experienced when I was uh, 19, uh, sexual assault and 19 in the industry. Mm. Um, my body doesn't know the difference between sometimes a normal touch and being assaulted. Mm, mm, uh, mm. And it's just something that's inside of me uh, that I have to work on every day. It's powerful. And the truth is that Joanne and this record, uh, I looked back at, you know, my father's sister, who we'll get into that in a minute, yeah. who uh, I was named after and her pain. And it, it gave me strength to go on. Uh, you know, life is a dogfight for a lot of people. Yep. And you got to be a pit bull. You said something recently, which I really, I, I picked up out of, a, and I don't like to paraphrase other people's articles out of respect to okay. journalism and the context, but you said something that was powerful to me, which was that when you start to really investigate why your father would be so upset all the time and the painful memories that he would go through having lost somebody, how that made you wonder whether or not, you know, back in the day you felt you were doing something wrong. Oh, yeah. And, Oh, yeah. My whole life, I thought I, it was my fault that my father was angry. And, and that's what I kind of meant before. Henceforth, the desire to go out and do something magical that they can be proud of, right? The drive behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like my whole existence in some way has been to <laughs> make my father proud. <laughs> you know, I'm just an Italian girl that really wants her dad to be proud. Uh, and and uh, he is. Now you make a record in this is laid out here. I'm, I'm going to refer to songs. You know, Angel Down. Yeah. It appears twice for a reason. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I wrote this song about Trayvon Martin. Mm. Uh, so it was actually a couple years ago uh, when um, he was shot and murdered. And uh, the epidemic of um, young African Americans being uh, murdered in this country. Uh, I was overwhelmed by the fact that people just stood around and didn't do anything about it and that the justice system continues to over and over again not... Uh, uh, seek justice for these families. Uh, also listening, having my ear to the ground of my fans, young um, African-American women and boys who are terrified. Uh, they tell me they drive in their cars and if they hear a siren, there is a paranoia that rushes through their body, that they freeze up, that they can't think, uh, that this is a, a tremendous anxiety. This is something that I care about. Mm. This is uh, something that has to stop. Uh, something that uh, we all need to heal from. And Angel Down, uh, you know, the, the lyrics, um, um, doesn't everyone belong in the arms of the sacred? Why do we pretend we're wrong? Has our young courage faded? Shots were fired down the street by the church where we used to meet. Angel Down, Angel Down. Why do people just stand around? Mm. You are 100% like it or not drawn into the conversation. 
I well, I I can only you know uh, pray on that. You know that uh, my voice and the lyrics will reach people. Uh, it's also a complicated thing. I'm not an African American woman. You know, I you know how do you speak about? I things? was going to ask you about that because by by rights, having a voice, being an artist, and being somebody who's affected by things and wanting to be able to be a part of this conversation one way or the other, because to not be would feel strange. It to feels you. it it feels impossible. Right. It feels impossible. How can I not say something? Right. How could I possibly make an album about twerking my ass in, in the club? It's really like, I mean, being honest, in mm. my mind, it's like I can't reckon it. It feels um, uh, empty. Mm. It mm. feels uh, irrelevant. When I go into the studio and I write, I, I at this moment in my career, I can't possibly just sit and, and think of, Oh, what would be just fun? Yeah. What you know? Because the thing is, is there's a lot of fun music on That's this record. That's what I mean. You're right? looking for a good time, but you I'm can't escape for... the truth. Right yeah, I now. can't. And but we all can't. We all can't. Yeah, and no nice. matter how much, how no matter how much we want to just have fun, you mm -hmm. know, the more that we mask the shame, right, of this anxiety, the, worse it's the gonna harder get. it's going to be to heal. And uh, you know, uh, uh, these records, they are. It is. It is. It was so. Um, not important to me, just the way that it is for me as a songwriter at this moment in my life. I absolutely cannot write anything that does not have a voice and a purpose in the universe. It's like, why would I have this voice? Why would I have this platform? Yeah, where do the words go and what do they mean? It's like they used to say back in the day, oh, have you heard Lady Gaga? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, she's really good. Cool. But what's she saying? Exactly. I mean, I've had that. I've done that. That was great. I loved it. It was amazing. And I will sing those songs for you and for everyone for the rest of my life. I'll tour until I'm 79, maybe eight, maybe 90 like Tony, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I can't wait. I think I'm going to peak at 75, <laughs> you know, long, uh, long, uh, uh, white, uh, gray hair, sleeve tattoos, just you'll be banging doing the, around, pop, 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 poker face, pop, pop, poker you, face. You'll have the legendary slot on the Sunday at Glastonbury. Yeah, why not? <laughs> That's what it will be. I want to be at Old Cella. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I, but I'm a woman now. I'm a woman and I care about the world and I care about young people and that's what I want to make. There are sort of three very distinctive layers to this record, you know, from a listener's point of view. And that's not to even remotely suggest that we know what's going on in your mind, but just, you know, when you're taking it in. One is what's going on inside the room, i.e. like well, inside the club, like looking for the party, looking for that moment. Right. One is what's going outside the window. Yeah. And actually pulling back the blinds and taking a look and being honest. Yeah. And the other one is what's going on inside the home. Yeah. And I think that there is some pain in this record that you could absolutely connect to a relationship or yes. the end of a relationship. And I wondered how tough that's been given, you know, the public announcement that you're that you you know your marriage is breaking up and you've got to go make a record well engagement let's not say marriage all right cool even worse. but yeah but yeah it was a marriage you know yeah. in a way yeah and um very painful i mean who wants to see that i mean it's hard enough when you know love isn't working out the way you want it to and then yeah. you got to see it on the news yeah and you got to walk down the street and have somebody go are you okay can you keep that stuff private no you can't no. It's it's out there. I can Forget barely it. keep anything private. It's done. It's just that's and that's part of what I meant before when mm. I said there's no turning back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's what yeah. I why I need Joanne. Yeah. Cuz she reminds <laughs> me that that little girl's always going to be there. That little girl at the piano. That's who I am. I mean even a song like Perfect Illusion which is, you know, a banger. I've said it on the record. And I just think lyrically and the whole vibe of it is just like taking back some control. And I feel like that's where you're at. It feels like you like, no, I'm going to control this my way or at least try to. Perfect Illusion is 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 about, yeah, trying to get your bearings in a very chaotic universe, um, whether your relationships in chaos. Right. And you're wondering if any of it was real at all. Mm. Did I was this real? Did mm. I did we really love each other? Um was it all a perfect illusion? Um, mistaken for love? Did I? What am I missing, man? How did I? How did I not f catch that? Because my guessing game is strong. <laughs> it's way too real to be wrong, <laughs> right? And it's also, uh, you know, 
you know, I don't date um, like the same way my friends date, you know, or in, I see my friends dating like on the internet and Instagram and everything everybody goes through. And man, is it rough. I mean, I see my friends going, well, he told me he was here and look what's going on on Instagram. Like, what's this post? You know, and they're like, you know, <laughs> looking at Instagram, Instagram's ruining relationships and Snapchat's ruining relationships <laughs> and Twitter and all that. It's like people are subliminally telling each other stuff uh, through social media about what they feel about each other. And it's all a perfect illusion. Mm. The, the real stuff is what we do in the room mm. together. Mm. When we look in each other's mm. eyes and mm. all that floats away. Because let me tell you something. The internet is just like the earth in a way. We're going to destroy it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't disagree. I've said this before. I think I said to someone that last year we were trying to do something and I said, that the internet's dead and they were like what are you talking about and i didn't really know at the time it just came out i just thought it kind of feels a bit dead to me it is dead it's noise it's like a big toilet you know what like it's gar it's a garbage can mm. i can't sort between what's real and what's not i'm watching all these young kids die right and then you go on the internet and it's a bunch of garbage in the way of the truth there's a song on this album called joanne which yeah. the uh, yeah, which is the title track, and is um, one of the first things. I'm just going to tell the story. I'm driving Mark down to Blood Studio downtown. Yeah. To continue working with you on the record. Yeah. And I'm in my Jeep. It's Saturday morning or whatever. Jeep. And my mum's my mum's <laughs> in the back. Yeah. My mum's in town. Yeah. Like, I actually know this story, but yeah. tell it. Mark Mark told me, but you should tell it. Yeah, Lizzie Rascal. We're in the back. And he starts playing songs and he played Perfect Illusion and we were just like, oh, play it again. We cranked it up. And then he plays Joanne. And man, we were all just in the car, like freaking out at that song. <laughs> My mum's like, who is this Lady Gaga? Yeah. <laughs> yeah she, no, he told me. He told me she cried. She did. But it's as pieces of music go, as a song on this record goes, there's a performance in that, and there's a there's a feeling in that song that's that that even on an album like this, it's that's a one take that that song. Uh, that's why I was going. I wondered how you got it out. Yeah, I mean, that's a one take. We did it. That was the first take we did it. He kept the vocal. He wouldn't let me change it. He's smart. Yeah, we did it. Um, we wrote it uh, on a. I have a picture of it. I'll put it out mm. when the the song comes out. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you uh, premiere the song. Yeah, when we play it, man, we'll time it. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'll, uh, put, I'll release it. Someone took a photo of me and Mark. We were on the grass uh, with the, the hummingbird he gave me. He gave me a, a, a hummingbird guitar. He was playing it. I named her Amy. Oh, um, man, special. Yeah, and um, uh, we were sitting there, and I had my typewriter out. We were uh, writing the song, and there was, someone took a photograph of us. And it was that day that uh, Mark said to me, he's like, what do you have to write about? What do you have to write about? Not just, you know, let's write because you can write whatever you want. I mean, and it's true. Like, I mean, I, I don't mean that in like an arrogant way. Yeah. I love writing music. I could go in for any artist and help them write, you know, their dream album. He's like, but what do you have to write? And I had to write about Joanne. I had to because it's the single most uh, important event in my family's life. And it's the thing that has made me who I am today. The subject matter that ties the album together, that gives it its heart and its soul mixed with that vocal and just the timelessness of that particular moment, it's going to really blow people away. And I think, you know, what's interesting is I think about your career or your journey, that's a better word. I think about your journey to date and I think about where you've taken us as listeners and every album is just like, I'm over here now and then don't get too comfortable because now I'm over here. Yeah. Just when you thought it was safe, now I'm going to go over here. Yeah. And then I'm going to go over here, I'm going to work with Tony. Then I'm going to go win a Golden Globe. Ridiculous. Thank you. And, <laughs> and, then, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give you something like Joanne. And it's just like, your audience, man, they're in this for the ride. You can tell because there's no other option. Well, they, you know, they're, my fans are my heart and my soul in so many ways because they, they're on a roller coaster that, you can't see where it's going. You, you know? ain't thinking. I mean, you are grateful, but you ain't thinking about what's going to make them happy considering the last thing. You can't be because it's just like. No, well, it's, I don't think that's a healthy way to make music. 
you know, I think if when you're thinking about other people's perspectives too much in that way, like, oh, oh, you know, what musically do you, do you want from me? Um, that's that's trouble. That's toxic. But by the very nature of that statement, you're so out of step with really what pop stardom kind of is, because, you know, and I'm not going to name names, but there are people who are your contemporaries or otherwise who without a doubt sit down with 50 writers and work out what's the thing. Yeah, and I th- I find that to be completely boring, and it's a business, and it's like an it's it's basically an algorithm. Yeah, that I'm not interested in being a part. That's not music to me. That is becoming a part of the system, and the more that you become part of the system, the more that you lose yourself, and you just become a robot. You know, uh, I I want to create things that people never forget. I don't want to be one of the pack. Is that what success is to you now? Having seen what success can be on a Wikipedia level, (laughs) you know, from number ones to stadiums. Well, you know, the thing is, you just never know what's going to happen. I mean, when I put Just Dance out, there was nothing on the radio like Just Dance. My friend Mike Skinner from the streets said something to me once. We were having a coffee. You know the streets. Amazing. And from the UK. And we were talking about you and he was like, look, Gaga brought four to the floor back to American radio. She was the first artist to put a four to the floor beat on American radio. Every song. You were pre-DM. (laughs) PDM. <laughs> I'm not going to blame you for all the sh- that came out of EDM, I'm sorry. but you certainly, <laughs> oh, but you certainly, oh, you certainly put some of the good stuff on the radio. It's Thank true. You. That was the first time Four on the Floor came back on radio in America. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not going to take responsibility for that. That's a nice thing to say. But all I'm trying to say is, is Just Dance was like nothing on the radio. Uh, Bad Romance was like nothing on the radio. Yeah. Born This Way was like nothing on the radio. Perfect Illusion. Uh, applause was like nothing on the radio. And uh, Perfect Illusion's like nothing on the radio. So, you know, it's like sometimes I always I, I always say to people, it, did everybody get the memo <laughs> <laughs> that it's never going to be what's happening? Uh, because that's just not what I do. I'm always doing what I, I, I'm, I'm what's happening. You know, I'm what's happening. And that's like a message that I think artists should take with them, that you are what's happening. Uh, why, why, uh, why surgically uh, create something of yourself to fit into, like I said, an algorithm? That, that this, is ma- this is math. That's the business of music. Mm. The business of music is something that um, it's not good for me. It's not healthy for me. I have a need to make music. I don't have a need to be famous. It's totally different. You have found yourself in situations and in environments which have probably challenged you and taken you out of your comfort zone. And I can think of, you know, your work on screen being that, um, you know, being acknowledged for American Horror Story, for your work in that. Doing that, going into A Star Is Born, Can't working wait. with Bradley Cooper. Yeah, we haven't started yet, but it's amazing. What a role, though. Yeah, man, I'm lucky. Did I'm you so have to lucky. audition? Yes, I did. How was that? Scary, <laughs> exciting, but you know, uh, I'm aroused by danger. <laughs> that's part of that's part of me, you know, and that's on the record too. Why am I aroused by danger? John Wayne. Yeah, I know? was going to talk about that one too. It's one of the funnest songs on the record, you know. Thank you. Uh, you know, that record's about why do I chase wild men? You know, and I chase wild men because I chase my dad. My dad's a wild man. Why is my dad a wild man? Because he lost his sister when he was 15. And since he lost his sister, he's been chasing and chasing and chasing a way to not feel the pain. You've come to a point of realization and, and of self-assessment on this record. You just summed up the whole album right there in, in, yeah. in, in like one sentence. Yeah. So what does the future look like to you now that you're able to recognize those things? Healing. Mm. Healing. Joy. Way of giving that as much as I can to other people, sharing that story, helping them to realize what's happening in their own families mm. and in their own lives. Mm. You know, I want mm. people to hear Joanne and go, oh, that's why I do that. Mm. Oh, that's why I act that way. Still making mistakes, though, I'm sure, along oh, the way. They make mistakes. I'm not, you know, the, on Diamond Heart, yeah. I say I might not be flawless, but you know I've got a diamond heart. So many good lines in this album. It's like when you like literally, because I'm trying to take them in in the context of all of the music that's going on around the same time, but you've isolated f- like four or five absolute f***ing crushes. But that's my it? look, like that song is, uh, if I could, you know, young wild American looking to be something, out, out of school, go go in for a hundred or two. Truth. Some <laughs> broke me in. Wrecked all my innocence, mm-hmm. but I'll just keep go-going because this dance is on you. 
<laughs> one, five, ten, lay a million on me before the end of this song. Young, wild American, come on, baby. Do you have a girlfriend? Rain on me a million. I'm not flawless, but I've got a diamond heart. You know, that record's about what you're willing to do to survive, what you're willing to do to achieve the American dream, no matter how tough your family made you. You know, I felt a lot of shame my whole life, you know, wondering if it was my fault when my dad was angry, if it was my fault when my mom would shut down because... You know, she couldn't quite handle the chaos, right? Be and then you go, oh, 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 I get it. So, you know, an Italian-American girl grew up working class, hardworking. Working class and, and, and gave up everything for me and my sister so that we could blossom. And can you imagine giving us everything, education and all, and I say, I want to be a singer. And you go ahead and you disrespect them by putting all those delicious cold cuts on your body and taking them to an oh, How could yeah. you have done that? Not just that the must have been most of the worst moments in your family's history. Look at this delicious meats. Yeah, <laughs> what, are you, <laughs> what, is, what is this? What is, what is are you doing? Oh, Why didn't you use prosciutto? Gee, oh, my God, <laughs> look at this. You know what, though, that, that, that wasn't, the, that, those moments actually were uh, less troublesome for my family. It was much earlier. It was yeah, like my in my childhood. Like I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was wrecked trying to, you know, be independent in a family that was, my father feared my death in of the course. most powerful now way. Now we know the story, of yeah, course. Yeah, my dad didn't want to lose me. Of course. He overprotected me my whole life. I, you know, and I was always going, what I do wrong? What's wrong with me? Is there's, why do I need to be inside? You know, and what did I do? I sat at the piano and I played till my fingers bled and I wrote songs and became who I am. You know, there is another story. And I mean, all the kind of nonsense that played out in public as the aside, but there is another artist who had lived, has lived a very parallel existence based on this story, which I'm sure you can relate to. You know, Madonna tells a like, very similar story. Overprotective father, Papa don't preach. You know what I mean? Madonna and I are very different. Mm. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I wouldn't make that comparison at all. All right. And I don't mean to disrespect Madonna. No, 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 it's you cool. Know, it's she's cool. a, she's a, uh, you know, a nice lady, and she's had a fantastic, huge career. She's the biggest pop star of all time. Mm -hmm. um, but I play a lot of instruments. I write all my own music. I spend hours and hours a day in the studio. I'm a producer. I'm a writer. What I do is different. I'm not uh, just rehearsing over and over again to put on a, a show. There is a spontaneity in my work. I allow myself to fail. Mm -hmm. I allow myself to break. I'm not afraid of my flaws. You know, there are major differences between me and her, and um, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. You are I just, absolutely I just, entitled to stay, I say just who will, you are. I just will not be compared to anyone anymore. I am who the f I am, and this is me. You know, this my, my life story is my life story, just like yours is. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is that we all express things in different ways. But my rebellion against my father for being angry with him, for being angry with me, that has ended. Mm. This, this album is about me embracing who I am. You know, it's like finally I'm, I can bite back. And I'm so grateful to Mark and to, to Josh Homme and to... Kev, Kevin. You know, and to Kevin Parker and to Father and John Misty and yeah. to Beck. You know, can you imagine? I'm, I'm Beck's biggest fan. I'm Beck's. Look at me. I'm Beck's biggest. fan. I have fan. to fight you for that, but go ahead. Okay, fine. I'm his biggest fan. If <laughs> yeah. you want to fight me about it, we'll fight about it. I'm talking. We're talking. We're talking stereopathic soul manure. We're talking one foot in the grave. We're talking. I'm talking. I was ten. I I, I walked Here in comes. Bonnaroo, right? Yeah, yeah. From the center of a hundred thousand people. To be up front. I left every one of my friends who were all on mushrooms. <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> And I was like, bye. And they said, we're not coming with you. That's ridiculous. They're like, it's not cool to go to the front of the line and push people away. I was like, no, it's not. Except if it's back because he's about to be on. I'll be back. And God bless Radiohead. And I got to the front and he was playing and he was taking uh, he was taking a, a request. And I go, Deborah! Did he do it? He f***ing played Deborah. I loved it. Okay? And when I met him, I told him and he remembered. 
And I said, he said, we talked for hours. We had amazing conversations about life, personal conversations yeah, that yeah, I yeah. won't share. Of course. And then he was like, okay, cool. And I said, so uh, uh, what do you want to do, man? He's like, I don't know. And I said, well, you want to just like uh, grab a guitar? I could sit at the piano. We'll throw some mics up. Like, we got the drum kit set up. You want to just go in there and just, you know, jam? And he goes, yeah, okay. And we just went in there and we just... Jam, I got to jam with my idol. That's f- incredible. Where okay. is he on the record? What are we hearing him on? Dancing What's... in Circles. Incredible. I wrote Dancing in Circles with Bay. I love that. Shit. He is just the most wonderful, amazing person. And you meet some. Sometimes you meet an idol, and they are everything and more that you thought that they could be. I, you know, I can say having met many of them. That's that's been part of my journey is to meet a lot of musicians and spend, and spend time like this for better or for worse with musicians, just trying to get some greatness like a master class for me right and i met a lot of idols and more than you think are rad more than you think they say never meet them a lot of them are really cool a lot of them are really cool but once in a while you, you meet, meet a one that's really a shit. you meet a total yeah it's totally true and it's not cool it's at really all. not cool and it sucks because you're just like <laughs> man i thought you were awesome and you're not how are you gonna do hey girl live oh oh i can't wait it's the, uh, one of the biggest jams on the record love that record. and you and Flo, like yeah. Unreal chemistry. I remember she came in and I was like, okay, I want to go back and forth. And her and I went got, and got into it about it because she was like, why are we going back and forth? We should just do it. You know, I should just sing the second verse and this. And I was like, no. I yeah. was like, there's got to be a conversation. We got to talk to each other. I need two women having it out and then coming together, you know? And Flo is one of the most talented singers I've ever heard Hands in my life. Down. And I stopped smoking. Yeah, right. I did. Yeah, right. Well, I have some to do man my records coming so you, coming out so you haven't quite so a few cheeky ones here and there right tell the truth i i get like a little bit of my cigar you're unbelievable day. you're just like I, hey what's up check this out exclusive you ready i quit smoking did you not really <laughs> no i really you know what though i really did because no you didn't stop I lying did, but if you, you but, artists are all the same i've heard it so many times i've quit smoking and okay. then you're at the studio like having a cheeky puff okay but wait a second me smoking a pack of cigars a day is really different from me having a cheeky smoke like one little bit throughout the day to just like calm my nerves that's different did you quit smoking yes <laughs> In my mind, I had to. You listen, when Stevie Wonder hugs you and goes, hey, girl, you guys stop smoking them cigarettes, girl. Oh, that's you told. Because, man, I mean. Oh, yeah. Or it's... Tony, Tony, you're, you're spoiling your gift. Mm. You're spoiling your gift. Don't do that, lady. Lady, don't do that, lady. And then I got Elton. Oh, God. I mean, the, that talk about the trilogy of heartbreak. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah, Stevie. El, Elton, Stevie, and Tony, Tony Bennett telling you not to stop smoking. I'm like, F-. What's the best bit of advice Elton ever gave you? <laughs> to get sober. Yeah, good advice. Yeah. Yeah, he's a smart one. Very smart. No, he calls me and he'll be like, you got to get together. You got to get together. You got to get that voice. You, you got, no, no, did you been drinking? You been drinking? You been smoking? <laughs> I mean, it's like, I'm like, you didn't get sober until you were f- it's 70. Exactly. Like, I guess, exactly. Like, I'm really, it's really, uh, but you know what? You know what? It's a different age now. It's a different age. Different age. There's a lot, the stress, what's going on in the world. Yep. The amount of drugs. Yep. How available it is to everyone, to young kids. You it's also, that- it's a, you know, I got to be a good example and role model too for young people. But you, well, you know, careful about that language I, because I that do, can be tough. I, it, it it's can a high, be. You're setting a bar very high for yourself there. Well, you know, I'm not saying that I'm going to be the best role model in all ways, but I can do my best. You, yeah, you can do your best. There you go. That's. I mean, I'm just saying like if you come out there and be like, I've got to be an amazing role model, you're more likely to turn around on the off day and say, no, I don't do that anymore. I'm glad. I don't do that anymore. Not you that can't I mean. Say, f- it. Yeah. If you're gonna say f- it, you just gotta say f- it. I'm not gonna be angry anymore. But you still feel angry enough to get the job done. Yeah, man. I gotta go out and sing the shit out of these songs for my family, for my fans, for my grandma who lost her daughter. I gotta go out there and do this. Shit. And you know what? I can't wait for that moment at the Super Bowl when I get to sing this music and my grandma is sitting up there. And she gets, she knows that her daughter's listening. That's the moment. That's why I made this album. You know, I made it for the world. I made it for my, for my, my fans. I made it for people. I made it for people that are not my fans as well. I made it for people that 
thought they never could have ever liked a Lady Gaga song in their life, like maybe your mom, you know? Lizzie in the back seat. Yeah. You know, going, who is this, right? But that came from a very real place. That came, you know, I was the I, I was thinking about it going, okay, if I was just, you know, not famous me and I was just some girl living anywhere in America and I put my record out, you know, you know, what would I be doing? And, you know, my dad's got a restaurant called Joanne, named after his sister. And I said, you know, I'd probably help my dad out. I'd put I'd put a music out called Joanne, and I'd sit outside the restaurant and I'd play that song every day and get people to come in and have dinner. It's that simple. I love my family and every and you know not, and a lot of people don't have family mm-hmm. and that's also what's important about this record is because if you do have family and if you do have friends and if you do have support around you even if life is tough you got it's this is the time for us to come together this is not about labels anymore you know I want my fans to embrace the difference of this album and help to heal other people because they're strong now <laughs> 